Hello and welcome to lecture 7 of the course theory of computation. In lecture 6, uh, we saw uh, non-deterministic finite automata which are NFAs. Uh, we, we did not formally define it, we, but we saw examples and we tried to understand it through these examples. It was uh, the same as DFAs, but with some added uh, seemingly added flexibilities like you could have multiple uh, arrows for the same now multiple outgoing arrows for the same symbol. You could also make epsilon transitions and then uh, you accept a string if there is at least one way to uh, process it correctly. Right? There could be multiple ways to process it, but at, if at, at least one of them is a valid accepting computation. Um, you accept the string. right? Now, uh, let us come to the formal definition of uh, NFAs. Right? So, the definition is very similar to what we saw in DFA. So, non-deterministic finite automata or an NFA, right? A finite automaton or an NFA is a phi tuple, exactly the same things Q, sigma, delta, Q0 and F. So, here if you see the, the definition, Q is a set of states, sigma is a finite alphabet, Q0 is a start state and F is a set of accepting states. So, this is exactly the same as what we saw in DFAs. Right? So, Q sigma, delta, uh, Q sigma, Q0 and F are all the same. The only thing where this definition differs, right? that is why I have written uh, it in red, is a transition function. Right? So, in the case of, uh, in the case of, uh, uh, in the case of uh, DFAs, we saw delta as Q cross sigma to q in DFAs. Right? So, basically if you were at a certain state and you have a certain symbol then you go to which state next that is what the transition function tells us. But over here um, it is not um, like that because here we have flexibilities. Right? So, this if you see here if you are at a certain state s and then you see a 1 there could be 2 possible uh, next states that you can go to or there could be 3 possible next states or maybe there is no outgoing arrow labeled 1. right? right? So, now we define this the, the transition function as a function. Uh, so, q cross sigma. So, the, instead of sigma I have written something else, but you ignore that for a moment. So, q cross sigma just think of it as q cross sigma to p of q where p is the power set of q which is the same as set of all um, it is a set of all subsets of q right so p of q means set of all subsets so it, the idea is this if you are at a certain state let's say s and the one can take you to let us say, let us say R 1 and R 2, then you will say that uh, the delta of S comma 1 is the set R 1 R 2. Right? If, if delta can take you to 2 uh, sorry if 1 can take you to 2 uh, uh, possible states, then you, you say that the, the transition function the output is a set of the possible states that one takes you to. right? So, this could be a singleton set. If there is only one outgoing arrow marked 1, then it will be a singleton set. It could also be an empty set. If there is no outgoing arrow marked 1, then it could be an empty set. right? So, the, the this is the definition of this is how delta is defined. So, it is a function q cross sigma to the power set. The, 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 the other aspect that I said ask you to hold on for a moment is that instead of q cross sigma we have q cross sigma subscript epsilon. right? So, why do we have the subscript epsilon? Basically, we want to accommodate the empty transitions that we said earlier. So, sigma subscript epsilon is nothing but sigma union epsilon. right? So, it is the set of all symbols plus the empty symbol. So, we want to also um, so we, wa we want to also say things like uh, if you are at s and then you see an empty string which are the empty transitions allowed. So, we want to have that also. So, it could we, we may also write things like uh, delta of s comma epsilon 
is uh, empty set for instance this indicates that from s there are no it's empty set so there are no arrows uh, no empty transitions uh, outgoing from s right so if instead of empty set you have uh, you have let's say some set let's say r1 this means that uh, there is a there is one outgoing arrow marked empty string and that out outgoing arrow takes you to r1 right so this is this is why we have uh, instead of sigma we have sigma and the empty string so sigma subscript epsilon means just sigma and the sigma which is the alphabet and the empty string and q0 is a start state f is a set of accepting states it's exactly the same as before right now we have to formally define what constitutes acceptance right so in the case of dfa it was very easy because there is only one way to process a string and at the end are you at accept or are you at accepting state or not now there are multiple ways but as i have been repeatedly saying you accept if at least if there is one valid way to process that string leading to an acceptance right okay so there is one uh, so um so what is important is that we understand the uh, what what exactly constitutes acceptance uh this notational thing is just for uh, formal uh, the, the formal representation and completeness even if this is confusing even if the notation is confusing as long as you have a thorough understanding of what constitutes acceptance um, that will be good okay so we say that n accepts w right n is a nfa w is a input string if we can write w as y1 y2 y3 up to ym okay so notice that i am not using w1 w2 up to wn so i am not using w instead i am using y that is one thing second i am not using n which was a length n instead i am using m which uh, okay so the reason is this so n is usually the length of the string but here i am using m because i am not uh, we are not splitting w into individual symbols we may also there may also be empty empty symbols in between right so i'll tell you why we need that so if you look at this dfa right that we saw in lecture 6 so this dfa accepts the string 1111 right so how does it accept the string 1111 so the first one takes it from q1 to q2 then an empty transition takes it from q2 to q3 then um, the the next one takes it from q3 to q4 and the last two ones keep it at q4 right so so there is an epsilon there is an empty transition happening here which is important right this is the reason why um, this is the reason why we should have uh, instead of uh, just looking at the string uh, symbol wise sometimes there may be need to insert an epsilon in in between the string right so that's why we have a provision uh, to write w as y1 y2 up to ym so if you added an epsilon then the what we have is not the, uh, the the length of the string so we may be increasing the length of the string by few how many ever epsilons we inserted right so these yis are not just alphabet sim symbols from the alphabet they could also be uh, uh, epsilon so that's why we have yis from sigma uh, subscript epsilon and a sequence of states r0 to rm such that this is similar to what we have seen so if we can uh, we accept a string if there is a way to split the string into y1 to ym right including epsilon such that the nfa for this particular uh, splitting up there is a valid computation for the nfa that takes it from the starting state to the accepting state so r0 must be the start state and for each i right for each i we want um, so basically we want um, so if you look at sorry 
if you look at delta sorry again um delta ri so um y i plus 1 okay so basically so or maybe i'll just write it sorry right so if you if you um, if you look at the i plus 1 symbol um then you should go to y2 right so in the case of dfa i would have written as um i would have written as r i plus 1 Equal to delta R I uh, Y I plus one because in D F in the case of D F A we uh, the the output is a single state, but here the output is a set. Right? So delta R I Y I plus one is a set, and we want to say that uh, right in the case of D F A it is like this. So you are at R I, right, and you see Y I plus one. You want to go to R I plus one. In the case of N F A it could be a set. So what we want to say is that this set contains R i plus one. So instead of equality, I will say R i plus one is a member of this set. Now, for which i is so i equal to starting from zero to m minus one, right? right. Uh, and finally, and the R m must be an accepting state. Right, this is the same uh, as what we had in uh, DFS. So, which means if there is a valid, if there is a way to uh, split up the string in a valid way and process the string such that it ends in an accepting state, we um, we say that the NFA n accepts W. Right. So, uh, the next thing is uh, we just want to just 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 try to be comfortable with this notation. So, just take an NFA. uh so in fact this is the nfa uh, that uh, where where we consider all the strings that end in 10 so let's see what are the uh, what are the states here so states are three states q1 q1 q2 q3 the alphabet is binary right 0 1 The set of accepting states is uh, just Q3. Start state is Q1, right? Now let's try to write down the uh, delta. Okay. So delta of uh, so delta has to be defined for each state zero, one, and epsilon. So Q1 zero. So Q1 zero is the set. Uh, sorry. So there is only one outgoing arrow uh, marked zero from Q1. So it is Q1. Delta of Q1 one. There are two outgoing arrows marked one from Q1, which is Q1 and Q2. Um, so again, right? Delta of Q1 empty string, right? So there is no uh, outgoing arrow marked with empty string. So I'll just put empty set. Delta of Q two zero uh, now. So there is only one outgoing arrow marked zero, uh, which goes to Q three. So it is. It is. So it is. No, note that I, it, everything is a set. And delta of Q two one, there are no outgoing arrows marked uh, one out of Q two. So it is an empty set. And delta of Q three zero, there are no outgoing arrows marked out of Q three, so this is empty. Delta of Q three one is also empty. So maybe okay, I'm kind of cramped for space. Let me just use the same line. Right. So this is this is the complete description of the. Okay, I've not marked a couple of empty. Uh, um, Transitions, but you can fill this in. So this is an example, and the formal notation, the formal definition, and formal uh, formally stating when a string gets accepted. Hope, hopefully, this is clear. Um, uh, please also read example one point three eight from the book. So basically, it's the same exercise that we just did for this uh, this NFA. I want you to read uh, 
so 1.38 basically uh, this is the NFA uh, the NFA that I have drawn below in blue that is the NFA that they are consider. So there are four states and then uh, binary alphabet etc. But uh, please please try to uh, work out these uh, what is Q, what is sigma, what is delta and so on. So this should give an understanding of what NFAs are and what um, how to represent them. Right. Uh, so we have seen NFAs, the formal definition, what constitute acceptance, right? Um, and we saw already said that in lecture six we said that NFAs are at least as powerful as DFAs. And uh, in the next lecture we will see. Uh, that they are no more powerful than DFAs, right? So we'll see why they are equivalent, and uh, uh, that's all. Uh, that's all from me in lecture seven, and see you at lecture eight. Thank you.